George Harrison's All Things Must Pass album is not only a commanding case for his songwriting talent, but a reimagining of what an album could be. In this album, George flourishes in his own domain and shares with us one of the best collections of solo Beatles songs we've ever seen. Today, we're going to show you 10 very interesting facts about George Harrison's All Things Must Pass. Let's do this. Many of the songs that ended up on All Things Must Pass were actually written by George while he was still in the Beatles. However, since George was always in the shadows of John and Paul, these songs went unheard for years. Phil Spector, who co-produced the album, says the following about George's stockpile of songs. I went to George's Friar Park and he said, I have a few ditties for you to hear. It was endless. He had literally hundreds of songs and each one was better than the rest. He had all this emotion built up when it was released to me. The songs that George wrote while still in the Beatles include Art of Dying, Let It Down, Isn't It a Pity, Hear Me Lord, Wah Wah, and the title track, All Things Must Pass. The album is charged with Beatles breakup and tension references. When George briefly quit the Beatles in January of 1969, he went to his home to write Wah Wah. In fact, Wah Wah was George's way of saying headache. George says the following about this song. There's a scene where Paul and I are having an argument and we're trying to cover it up. Then the next scene, I'm not there and Yoko's just screaming, doing her screeching number. Well, that's where I'd left and I went home to write Wawa. It had been giving me a Wawa. Like I had such a headache with the whole argument. It was such a headache. Another song that makes references to the tension within the Beatles is Run of the Mill. If you listen to the lyrics, you can hear lines such as, as the days stand up on end, you've got me wondering how I lost your friendship. This lyric and many others are sad signs pointing to the crumbling friendships amongst the Beatles. All Things Must Pass is the most successful Beatles solo album. The album single, My Sweet Lord, was the first Beatles solo single to go number one in the UK and in the US. Additionally, the album stayed at number one on the charts for seven weeks, and it has sold more copies than Paul McCartney and John Lennon's first solo albums combined. The numerical success of All Things Must Pass helps us understand why it's also one of the most culturally significant albums of all time. Its incorporation of ideas regarding Eastern spirituality impacted the consciousness of the same young generation who had been fans of the Beatles during their Sgt. Pepper psychedelic days. The Beatles informally recorded the album's title track, All Things Must Pass. The band rehearsed the song during their sessions for Let It Be album and film project, but it was never officially recorded. Although it was rejected by the band and tossed from the final album, the song did undergo lyrical changes at the hands of the Beatles. For example, John suggested changing the word win to mind and to add some psychedelia and spirituality. I highly suggest searching for snippets of the Beatles rehearsing All Things Must Pass on the internet and giving them a listen. All Things Must Pass is a triple album and is often credited as rock's first triple album ever. The first two LPs consist of the main body of the songs, and the third LP called Apple Jam consists of the informal jams. Klaus Vormann, who played bass on some of the album's tracks, says the following about these jam sessions. Those jams happened all the time. You know, we were very relaxed. There was no pressure and we had time to jam as we warmed up. Or after we did a track. It was never organized. Somebody would just start playing something. We'd all join in and started jamming around. In the end, George had a whole tape of this stuff. He knew from all the past sessions that so many things were just forgotten. So this time he thought he'd just keep the machine on. All of the tracks on Apple Jam were improvised and are instrumentals except the song called It's Johnny's Birthday. This song was a gift from George to John Lennon for his 30th birthday. Bob Dylan has a huge presence on All Things Must Pass. First, the song I'd Have You Anytime was co-written with Dylan while the two were at Woodstock. Lastly, George wrote Behind That Locked Door about Dylan, who was making a return to live performing as a way to encourage and support him. The song reflects George's love of his friend and esteem of his work. George was sued for copyright infringement for the album's most popular song, My Sweet Lord. A suit was filed against him based on the grounds that George had copied the melody from the Chiffon's hit song, He's So Fine. After admitting he had heard the song before, the court ruled that George had subconsciously copied the melody and he was fined $1.6 million. All Things Must Pass was co-produced by Phil Spector, the same producer that produced the Beatles album, Let It Be. However, Spector is said to have acted very erratically during recording sessions, leaving George to do much of the production work himself. George jokingly, or not, recalls that Spector would have 18 cherry brandies before he could get himself down to the studio. 
Additionally, similar to Paul's claim that Let It Be was being overproduced, George has admitted disliking of Spectre's heavy mixing for All Things Must Pass. Many notable musicians played on All Things Must Pass. To name a few, Ringo Starr, Eric Clapton, Klaus Vormann, Billy Preston, and Jim Gordon all contributed to the album's production. With this impressive lineup of musicians, it's no wonder why this album was such a success. All Things Must Pass proved to listeners that George Harrison was a powerhouse of her songwriter and a force to be reckoned with in rock and roll. The musically and lyrically brilliant songs demonstrated how crucial George was during the days of the Beatles and how crucial he would be for shaping the future of music. The album influenced countless artists and musical genres, as well as continued to spread the gospel of love and spirituality to mainstream media that had been established in the mid-60s. With this album, George simultaneously claimed his independence from the Beatles and impacted social consciousness and the world of music. That's all for today, everyone. I hope you enjoy the video. You can follow us here, and I'll see you next time.